turn my volumes up. I did not plan this very well. <clears throat> I think I got it now. Wait for some people to join to see if anybody's going to join tonight. I'm going to do a unscheduled live shave with my buddy, the Shaving Tulsa Tim. Sup, Thirsty Badge. Just waiting on my buddy Tim to join so we can do a impromptu live shave. It was kind of unplanned. So I'm just waiting for some people to join and go from there. And if you're into single edge blades, Walgreens has them on clearance right now. I picked up two 10 packs for I think $4 each, which isn't bad at all. Matter of fact, most of their stuff is on clearance. Uh, as far as that goes, hey, here he is. What's up? I'm bro. Yeah, not much. Just trying to get everything adjusted here. You're fine. Take your time. Uh, we don't have many people on yet. Right. So I'm waiting. So reloading my brush. What do you? I'm gonna turn off my Wi-Fi, so I may actually cut out for a second. Bear with me. prepared for this because we kind of just said, hey, you want to live shave? You're like, sure. Yeah. Um, I'm like, yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> why don't you <laughs> shave my anyway, Might as well shave while doing it with you, you know? Exactly. And it was funny because I'm not a single-edge blade. I don't have very many. I, I bought some when I bought my first uh, 1914, but I was right. out. So I'm like, I wonder if Walgreens has any. I ran up there, and they have the, they call it the economy size, 10 packs on clearance for like $4.60. Not bad. Not so bad I bought two of them. Sad thing was, even like their DEs, like the Vander Hagen and then that one with the Pawn Star guy on it, they were all on clearance too. <laughs> right. Oh, man, nice. Nice score. I was actually just at Walgreens. Well, I've been I've been on the on the hunt. I've been on this kind of Old Spice kick lately. Okay. So I keep trying to find, I heard if you go to Family Dollar, or at least I heard on some old forums, if you go to the old Family Dollar, they have like an Old Spice knockoff. Really? They're supposed to be really close to the Schulten formula, so like really close to the original formulation of Old Spice, really nice and strong aftershave. But I've been to at least three different family dollars. I haven't found it. I've gone to a couple of uh, Dollar Generals. I've gone to Walgreens. I've gone to CVS just to see if I can find a knockoff after, you know, Old Spice aftershave. Haven't been able to find it. So. Well, we literally have a family dollar opening next to my house on the 12th, so I'll have to look for you. <laughs> Yeah, keep your eyes peeled. I mean, I can buy them, technically. I know where to get them online, like super cheap. Yeah. Like one of those, if I can find it, I can get it immediately, then I'm you know, well, I get instant it. gratification. Yep, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I was, like, I was texting my buddy. I'm like, hey, can I buy Blaze Loop Lady? He's like, just buy them on Amazon. You can get a shit ton for like eight bucks. I'm like, but I need them now. <laughs> right? I don't need them in two days. Yo, what's up, Esco? Well, I mean, that's kind of how it was with the whole, like, as soon as I started seeing people post more and more pictures with the uh, Cremo lathering shape cream yeah, and seeing where they were as far as all the clearance in, I was like, oh, man, I'm going to go see if I've if my local store's got any of those. So that night, as soon as I saw the post, I ran back outside, went to Walgreens, or not Walgreens, Target, and they had four, and I purchased two. And so now I'm debating on buying the other two. <laughs> are, really were they good. I was were they surprised. Clearance? How much did they cost? Uh, they were four fifty each, oh, wow. and that's for a horsehair brush, the Cremo horsehair that's out, that's uh, actually sourced out and manufactured by Vylong, and the lathering cream, the four point five mm -hmm. ounces of cream. So that's a really What's good up, deal. Mike? Got Mike from First Line Shaves and Sub Freak. <laughs> Got my buddy Chase here, Thirsty Badger. <laughs> Instant gratification, bro. We're all guilty of it, one hundred percent. One hundred percent. And see, I'm lucky. I'm near a lot of antique shops and stuff like that. James, J. Todd, he knows if he's on here or if he comes up on here later. But um, I have a lot of antique shops nearby, so sometimes if there's something that somebody's looking for, occasionally I can find it nearby. If it's something that I already have or I don't or I'm not particularly interested in, sure. But 
lately they've been kind of drying up a little bit as far as other stuff that I've been looking for, like mugs and accessories and things. Why? Because you bought it all. Uh, probably. <laughs> I went on this craze and I started going to like every antique store nearby and like, it's oh, this is a great deal. I'll pick that up. Blah, 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 blah. Fishing ain't easy, Julian. What's going on, Zach? Mentioning me earlier so I don't say anything stupid. I see you. Yes, Chase. That's right. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because I got a lot of my buddies coming on here just to give me a hard time. But now right. they're kind of interested in it, so I, I find it kind of funny. <laughs> so what do you, what do you, what's your gear tonight? Hey, Heather. Oh, I've got some cool stuff. So I okay. just picked up in a trade the Barista and Man Seville. Okay. It's modeled after an old school barbershop scent, but it smells very similar to their other soap, which is uh, Cheshire. It's kind of an Earl Grey kind of scent. So it smells like Earl Grey almost to me with a barbershop twist. It's very citrusy. Um, okay. I like it a lot because I like citrusy scents. Sure. Um, I'm also following up with the aftershave splash, the matching aftershave. I'm doing a spritz of Pharaoh's Dreamsicle Sterling. Okay. A little bit of uh, more citrusy scents afterwards. And for the actual razor, I have my Stolly Live Blade head on my Razor Rock uh, knob head handle, which I love this okay. handle. And then the Moonscape brush scuttle with my Grizzly car hop brush. That is such a cool handle on there. I like the carbs in the end of that thing. Yeah, man. It is. I love the little fluting on here. It's it's gorgeous. I saw another guy that picked one of these up a couple of weeks back. I'm like, man, I've got to have one. But every time he has these sales, these go like wildfire. I mean, like within seconds. What's and up, Sam? I don't know why. why. Do I? Yeah. I was talking to Sam Wise. He just joined. Yeah, I mean, that's the, with any of these big custom brush guys, if you're not on it when, they, when the drop goes, you're not getting it. Yep, 100% true. Well, I already did the shave with it the other day, but I have, I have to smell it again. Ah, jealous. I want it. <laughs> I'm so pissed I didn't buy the vaccine after shave, dude. It smells so good. See, and course, that's also one of my things, too. If I pick up, like, a soap, I, oh, man, it drives me nuts. If I love fall in love with the scent, I don't have the aftershave, and I become obsessed with getting the aftershave for it. I yep. bet you that smells fantastic. It does. It does. And I, the only reason I didn't pull the trigger is because it's $45, and, you know, I don't really have the justification to buy anymore. But right. so I'm like, oh, I'll just get the soap, and I'll be fine with it. I opened the lid. I'm like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. The one time. Right. Um, exactly. So I'm going to use my uh, Starling single edge now that I've got the blades back. Nice. Uh, like this, this is, I, I seem to gravitate between this one and my 1914. Real question here. Why has no one ever done a soap scented after Johnson's No More Tears Baby Shampoo? That shit smells so comforting. Um, probably because it honestly would not sell. That's my only suggestion. It's too light of a scent. What do you think? Is What about the scent? It Somebody might. asked why they didn't make a baby, you know that baby shampoo, the Johnson's No More Tears? It's got that oh. real subtle light scent. He's like, right. real question, why has anybody made it? And I said, honestly, it probably wouldn't sell just because it's such a light, mild scent. Yeah, I mean, I don't smell anything, honestly. Yeah. Oh, no one wants to smell like baby besides baby. Right. <laughs> I, I guess I probably should get started, too. I'm too busy yakking. And JR told you to shave your beard off. I know, I saw that. And I was going to say, hell no. I've been waiting to grow this beard forever um, because I was in that show that didn't allow me to have facial hair. And I've been growing it for months. It was becoming pretty glorious. And I'm like, damn, go it. So I'm going to shave it off. And as soon as the show got like two performances down, I stopped shaving and just let that five o'clock shadow start to grow back. And, yeah. But have you used the cube yet? The PAA cube? I do. I have the black one, and then I haven't even gotten to it yet. I've got yeah, this that's one. Right. You got the, yeah, you got the glow-in-the-dark one. <laughs> yeah, dude, it looks radioactive, man. I mean, I'll, I'll go to my bathroom and do this. I'll come back an hour later with the lights off, and this thing is still glowing in the, on my shelf. That's fun. I'm just surprised. I really wasn't expecting such crazy performance off of the, the cube. Uh -huh. And I waited to pull the trigger just because I was like, ah, it's all hype. You know, there's, uh, is there really that much there? But lo and behold, I... You know, call me a disbeliever. I mean, dang dumb. It, it now, performs really well. I don't really, I'm going to do it now just because, but normally I don't use it for pre-shave. I usually use it in the shower just as a facial cleaner, and that's it. Mm -hmm. That's probably why it's lasted so long. But, like, here, with my face being dry, it definitely pulls the hairs out when you're just kind of going against the grain like that. I think that helps prep a lot. Right. Okay. 
So uh, I liked your last video you did on YouTube. Oh, yeah, yeah. What's the, what's the one where you almost killed everybody? Oh, uh, the D Haven Razor. Yeah, yes. That, that thing, I got that for a steal for just like a few bucks um, at one of the regulars that I go to over in Jinx, Oklahoma. He has a little antique shop, and he'll get stuff in, and he'll call me. He calls me the razor guy because I'm the only one that comes in there looking for razors. <laughs> yeah. But um, he had this really cool razor, this really cool single-edged razor, and I was like, ooh, that looks really cool. You know, I did a, a pre, you know, like a little brief Google search on it. Found out he used his proprietary blades, but he was offering it for so cheap, and it looks so cool and pristine. I'm like, yeah, I'll go ahead and take it. And it just sat on my month, they, all my, you know, in my shade den on my shelf forever, because I didn't know how to use it. I had two blades. I had one still in the box, and then I had one that was already sitting on the razor itself, and it was just. It, it, the, the razors were just not very good. They, they were super dull. You have to resharpen them, all this other stuff. So I eventually just decided, you know what? I bet you I can despine it like you would maybe with a gem or anything else to fit it into like uh, my, uh, oh, uh, my uh, one blade core. Okay. You can despine gem blades to fit in these. Interesting. But, real quick, real quick, cut you off. Somebody said, do you guys strictly face lather or do we ever rock the bull lather? Um, oh. You've got a bull right now, don't you? Yeah, I've got, actually, I ended up getting this one from Ray's for stores in a trade along with my Razor Rock handle and head. So I love this bowl. I love the fact that you can actually grip it from the bottom. It's got a specific little area there for you oh, to grip nice. really well, but it's got a wide mouth, builds up a super lather. And then, of course, I've got my G12 shave scuttle from Georgetown Pottery that I love. And I was looking for a round for my own, where mine is, but to answer his question, you know, I mean, I do it occasionally. I just feel like I get a better exfoliation and everything when I get a face. But if I'm going to do two or three passes, then I'll tend to use the bowl because with that double line, it keeps the lather so hot. Right. That's why I like the brush scuttles. When I'm done with the brush, I just put it at, you know, bristles down into the scuttle, and it really gives me a nice uh, warm lather on the exactly. second pass. So how long does it take you to grow your facial hair? It amazes, it amazes well, the hair that I want. It typically takes me at least two months. Okay. Which you wouldn't think since I grow hair pretty quickly, but it seems like it just grows to a certain point and then it kind of starts to slow down significantly. Okay. So hopefully within two months I'll have the beard that I want, but we'll see. So are you just planning on keeping that and then just kind of trimming like you're doing now? Exactly. Yeah, I just maintain it. I keep those lines nice and clean. I always hate one of my big pet peeves, especially at work. So I of see course. guys running around, you know, trying to rock the beard, but they just they don't trim it. They don't keep their necks clean. They, it, it, it's just like they're just letting it grow, you know, wild. And I like to look clean. I like to present myself as such. Sure. So when I grow it, I try to maintain those lines, keep my jaw looking decent, keep my cheeks and everything looking nice and slim by maintaining everything. Okay. But a lot of guys don't do that, which, I mean, I get it, but. Teach their own, that's for sure. I, I tried doing the goatee and all that for a while. I got pretty good distance on it. I did it maybe about two years ago. People mm -hmm. started saying I looked like Louis C.K., so I shaved it right off. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, clean lines are life. 100%. It's, it's all about presentation, man. But we, yep. that's, I feel like part of what we do with wet shaving, it's just all about the, being mindful of presentation between layering scents, taking the time to shave and to use the appropriate razor to get you the most efficient shave. It's just yep. another thing for me, I, especially since, you know, I like to shave and I also mm -hmm. like to have facial hair. So being able to constantly maintain that beard growth I really enjoy some guys. I think it just comes down to a lot of them don't want to shave. And so they don't really want to bother with it, which I get, you know, but. Yeah, everybody's their own type of person. That's for sure. But mm -hmm. I was talking to, or listening to Heather on her live a little while ago. And a lot of people were saying since they started wet shaving, myself included, that my skin has gotten a lot clearer. Now, granted, I still don't take care of my body. I don't eat very good and I always should, but. I know part of it's my age, getting older, I don't have less oil on my face, but even still, I get a, I will stick in, I'll stick in an occasional breakout, and I think it's usually from an ingrown hair, 
but my mm -hmm. skin, my skin overall is so much better. Zach said all my beards have been products of sheer laziness. <laughs> yeah. Well, the weird thing is, is even when I do grow out a beard, I apply the shaving cream everywhere. I apply the aftershave everywhere. So it really seeps into the beard and, and onto the skin underneath the hair. All the nerd my beard grows in healthier because I wet shave, because I go through the whole process of the creating a lather and then using the right aftershave. And especially when I use stuff like Ariana and Evans, which is more like skin food than uh -huh. an actual aftershave, but it does tone. Oh, hey, hon. <laughs> What's up? She's been playing Friday the 13th in the living room, so. <laughs> I died. Oh, uh, she died. We're just shooting the shit, talking about random stuff. Just shaving, nothing to see here. Yeah, right. But I was telling him why I'm very particular about maintaining the lines on my face and why I'm growing out my beard. Mm -hmm. And that just drives me crazy that some people just let it just grow out kind yeah, of scraggly. It, it looks really bad. Yeah. Well, I think, wonder, too, what's that? I was going to say, well, it looks really bad. And, like, not only does it look bad, but typically when I just, I feel like when most guys have their beards, like, just mainly right here, and they don't let it grow it, up here, up here, it starts to get, like, thinner, probably because mm -hmm. it's closer to the eyes or something. And I'm like, ugh. <laughs> and I, th I think oh that's, that's part like of my thing is I, you go through this period where you're growing a beard where it just gets patchy, but if you let it just keep going, if you're patient with it, eventually it'll grow in for just about everybody. You might yeah. start off with some initial patchiness, but you just keep letting it go. It'll get fuller, it'll get more thick, but there's just areas that grow up so high, and, and especially on the neck where they're just always going to be thin and patchy because the hair just doesn't grow particularly thick there. And so I think that's just why it ends up looking tacky. But again... You know, I understand people will have their own routines and their own way of doing their own hair and stuff like that. I, you know, not one to sit here and just be like, ah, you got to have it this way or that way or whatever. Not everyone can have a magnificent beard like you, Tim. <laughs> 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 no, but honestly, like you were saying, you're putting the shaving cream in your beard and stuff. But I think, like you said, you're kind of laying the foundation for a healthy environment for that hair to grow better, too. You know, you're yes. helping exfoliate. You're putting the good moisturizing stuff in and all that. So I think that is a tribute to it. Now, I don't know if you've seen it. But, like, the whole reason I even got on Instagram and stuff is when I first thought, you know, I'm going to be cool and grow a beard is I started getting that really bad itch. And then that's when I found out about beard oil. I'm like, oh, my God. And it, it did. It worked. It softened the hair. But then I started getting ads for, like, beard vitamins and beard gummies and these miracle pills. I'm like, people really are buying this? Like, just let it grow? Right. Do you know if you want your beard to grow, you just take prenatal vitamins? I've heard that, too. Heard yeah. That. No, it's true. It's true. Because it has the biotin, and yeah. so yeah, so that helps your hair to grow. This it's for I, real. I tried taking uh, what do they call those? Uh, what do they call the uh, Propecia for hair? I tried uh -huh. doing that for a few months, and it came with like biotin gummies and stuff. Um, it made it a little fuller, didn't really make it grow. But when I definitely stopped taking it, it really came back. It like would fail back out with a vengeance. Yeah. But it is what it is. But I noticed like my hair and nails were definitely healthier and my nails were growing a lot quicker too yeah i i i know my well my mom has to take prenatal vitamins not because she's pregnant i, was, I wasn't judging <laughs> i know because well and i i mean i've had friends who take them but um for that reason but um you know my mom has lupus and so okay. that's good for her to have it's a lot of extra vitamins that are good for her sure so they suggest that she takes that and so, but she's always like complaining because she has to color her hair and she's like, my hair is just growing like crazy. <laughs> it's not fair. So. So you take folic acid and it helps beard grow. Yeah, that probably <laughs> does too. Okay. Yeah, well, prenatal just helps hair and nails. So, because it has a lot of biotin. So, and it's got a lot of vitamins as well. But yeah, it's, um, it's, it helps with uh, hair growth. Like a lot of people talk about how how much their hair, how quickly their hair grows and their nails grow when they're on prenatal hmm. vitamins. I think it's too late for me. My starting falling out when I was like 21. I'm <laughs> 35 now. I think it's, I think it's a dead zone up there now. But right, you're like been there, done that. It's too late. Yeah. Now people are like, just shave it off. I'm like, have you seen how huge my head is? No, I don't need to accentuate it anymore. <laughs> no, thank you. Well, honey, I was telling him the other day we were we were having a little chat during my live stream and. Uh, he lives up in Missouri, and I was telling him, oh, that's why he's just so 
But um, I was telling him that we've got season passes for Silver Dollar City. So he, Dakota, over at Herc Soaps, and I, and you, should all get together and hang yeah, out. Yeah, absolutely. And, get in some trouble. Right? <laughs> <laughs> get the gang together. Yeah, definitely. That would be that would be so much fun. We're still trying to get you on. Um, well, I gotta get some aftershave here. I need to go with some black bot, even though it doesn't really match. But I love black bot. Yeah, I, I hear you talking about black bot a lot. Well, if you're if you like musk, it's straight musk. It's good. If you don't, you'll hate it. I don't know if that makes any sense at all, but very. It's a 1960s. It's based off of um, black belt. Now, obviously, I wasn't around in the 60s, but. I've always been a fan of musky type scents, and this is just pure musk. And it's it's powdery, but it's strong. And it's in your face. I, I you have to go very lightly with it now. With obviously you know with with um, PAA the stuff is already super strong, but I always tend to overdo it too much. And but I mean it's it's I love it. One of my favorites. Right. So just something as a warning: if you don't like musk, you probably won't like it because it's pure musk. There's nothing else. I mean, I do like like musk. I do like musky scents. I like darker, earthier, spicy scents. But then again, like I'm using with this stuff, I mean, I do like citrusy, uh, a lighter scents too. It's it's weird the ranges that I have. It's not like I'm usually. It's people are in the ballpark either they like this particular kind of scent or this one. I find that I can find an appreciation for almost any scent that I've tried. I don't think there's ever been a scent that I've had that I just absolutely hate. Hi, Dan. I'm glad you're here watching from your car. Somebody <laughs> said, Yost, you notice that, that beer like, product behind you. I'm, I am not Viking. I'm looking for growing my beard thick. I have no beer products behind me anymore. All of my beer products, per se, like the oils and stuff, I, I've used up and I haven't tried using or buying anything else since. Everything is just pure shave at this point. But like Reyes was saying, does it smell like a 70-year-old man musk? Right. I don't know how to stand, but I literally feel like I'm taking a step back in time. You know, I, it feels like it's from that era. It feels like something that you wouldn't be able to walk into a store and buy nowadays, and that's why I like it. Yeah, I mean, that's that's one of the reasons why I love Brute, and yeah. that's one of the reasons why I like Sartorial. There's a really mm -hmm. popular cologne, men's cologne, but to me, Sartorial smells almost identical to Brute, just stronger scent, more okay. intense. So, I mean, I love scents like Brute. I love scents like Old Spice, which, to me, they... You know, they're, yeah, they're they're classy, older scents, but they've still got a lot of modern flair to them. Sure. And like uh, Thirsty Badger was saying, powdery musk is fantastic. And yeah, I def definitely some powder in there. But I, I would check it out if you're looking for something a little different. We have yeah. Mike, we have Dan, we have Chase, we have a whole bunch of people. But yeah, if you're into a musk or don't have anything like that in your wheelhouse, definitely check it out. No, I'll definitely keep it on the radar. I've got so many Phoenix products on my radar that's the problem right now the two main products of his that i really want well i've been trying to get a hold of uh atomic pumpkin in the aftershave and the soap for a while and unfortunately since it was a seasonal it's no longer on his website so i've been trying to go through other websites to see if they still have any in stock but um the main <laughs> scents that are currently he has listed are cold spices which of course is an homage to the original shulton formula for old spice yeah and i want his cad uh, which is, of course, a take on the Barbasol kind of okay. scent. So I really want those. But I've been on the Barbasol, said not a Barbasol, but a Barbasol. Carl Pond said there's too many mics here. There's like four mics. Because <laughs> Mike oh. is the name of uh, the guy who runs Carl Conk. And then I got my buddy Dan. Yes, you're famous now. <laughs> yes, yes. And the other mic, Lightspeed, yes. I have a ton of shit, and I do need more shelves. I actually have another board downstairs that's going to give me two more, um, two more sections. Because I have, like, now I'm starting to have to double up my aftershave in front of each other. I don't want that. I want them all next to each other. So, and I've been lazy. I threw that one up and didn't even stain it. So, I'm going to pull that one back down, stain it, and then i got to put another one up. See, I need to adopt some sort of shelf thing. What I need to do is I need to take my shave thing here, go to the guest bedroom where I have more room. But currently, what I do, of course, is I have shelf here. I've got a uh, shelf down here. I just recently bought this you know, for storing my soaps, and Tip's not a big fan. Well, I but... just, no, I don't mind it as far as, like, the air for your videos. It's just, it's heavy when I open the door. She, she claims it makes the door significantly heavier to open and close. But it I, does. Well, You're going to pull the whole door frame down, dude. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, let me, show you, let me show you. I'm going to pull my camera up real quick. The reason I did mine the way I did it is because it's very low profile. 
It's yeah. only only like an inch and a half deep. So that allows me to not take up much wall space. I don't have to worry about hitting anything. It's literally just, you know, I think it's four inches deep. That's it. And it's a, it's a one inch by one by four is all it is. And then I just That's put up some. Deceptive. It looks like it, it juts out a lot more than it does, but. Yeah. Really, it doesn't. I mean, that, that's about as thin as it can get so the soaps can remain on there and you can put a few razors like you've done. Yep, exactly. And that's why I left it open so you could still have it like that as well. And, you know, some of my shelves, I spaced out a little more because, like, the aftershaves are a lot taller, so I had to do it like that. But, yeah, when you're standing back here, it doesn't look that uh, that way. But I wanted to have it because they originally built this, and it sticks out really, really far. And right. I just I had to start piling stuff up on it. And I'm like, I need to figure out a way to display it, but not taking up the entire bathroom so I don't feel closed in at all. Yeah. And that's what I've tried to do. I've tried to utilize the space where you don't feel like you're getting too claustrophobic in here, but eventually it's going to get to that point where I'm going to need to come up with another solution. Yeah, light so speed. I'm definitely, I've definitely thought about putting, about putting LED lights on my shelves too. I want to have a, like a strip running behind the soap, and that way it illuminates from behind. Well, I remember in your early videos when you were, I think it was in your, like, dining room or... In my room, bedroom. <laughs> where, yeah, where you had the lights kind of streaming yeah. along in the background, which I thought looked really cool. It was a really cool effect there. It was cool. It was just way too much work, and I'm getting just the same amount of views, if not more, in the bathroom. And, you know, I was trying to be different than everybody else and not do the same crap, but apparently that's what people want to see. But I was using, like, my DSLR. I was using a wireless mic, and I was syncing the audio in post and putting all this production value into it, and it just... It just got to be too much. You didn't see a significant no. change. And yeah, there's this one guy, I forget his name on YouTube, that I really like. He's kind of changed his focus. He used to do a lot of wet shaving stuff. Now he's doing a little bit of everything. But he had this really interesting rustic style film um, editing that he used to do. And as far as the, the setting for all of his videos, he had a very specific way of doing it where he'd have like, there was a, a small light behind him. He had a beautiful wooden desk here. He had a nice dark wall kind of a darkish brown kind of coffee color in the background yeah. uh with you know like his rifle or whatever up top but i mean it was a very nice homey like he had an oil lamp hung up on one end i mean it just looked gorgeous i'm like oh, oh man i'd love oh, to do something oh. like that i know who you're talking about he, he, he usually grow a big white beard yeah he, he grows a beard and uh he did a review on like some vanderhagen products and stuff like that and he does and he's he's done some odd videos like one on like um, how to play the banjo or the fiddle or something like that. Why it, is that a weird video? Well, it's the stuff that he kind of centers it around. His, it's kind of all over the place. Like, he does one on how to, like, not yodel, but how to, like, croon. Mm -hmm. He has a whole video on how to croon, which is kind of That's awesome. interesting. It there's, is. there's a thing called throat singing, no. which is really cool. It sounds, Can you do that? No. It's actually <laughs> not good for, for your voice, at least probably for not for mine. And there's debate as to like there. There was a guy who came to our uh, uh, came to our university who like did it for us, and we were like, "Could that hurt your voice? Because it's it's not good." But um, it sounds cool. I mean, it sounds nice. I mean, it's not like you have to be the right type of person to be able to pull that off, I guess, for the right environment. Yeah, I don't know. It just seems like um, physically that would hurt your voice. She's very particular. I mean, she came from a background where, you know, she sang a lot of opera. She traveled around internationally for stuff like that. Wow. And so Notre Dame was. She's very conscious about things that might affect your vocal cords, whether that's, you know, sometimes we'll be listening to country singers and she's like, oh, man, he's doing that throat thing. That's just going to, that's going to cripple his voice. Well, it's all great, too, isn't it? They all add that in just for effect. Well, yeah, they do. Yeah, they'll do certain things. Or, you know how, um, like, Girls, they talk like this, and mm -hmm. I use them. And when you hear like, do you hear like that? My voice doing that weird crinkly thing. That's called yeah. vocal fry. And I'm like, when they're doing that, you're just you're just hurting your voice. I don't know why you think you sound cool, but well, aren't professional singers also known to get like nodes in their throat and stuff too? Yes. From like, yeah. yeah, you can get nodes in those, and that's the thing with like, I I don't feel like I'm like totally crazy as far as like my voice, like some like diva girls are like crazy and um and uh but, but they're like oh they don't want to go outside in the cold or whatever so it's fine but um if you get those nodes on your um this is not what this video is about but if you get those nodes <laughs> hey i'm enjoying your, i'm a musician i'm a musician and a singer myself so i like talking to oh yeah but if you get if you get um 
if you get those uh, nodes on your voice, um, they have to be surgically removed. There's no like getting rid of them. Yeah. And um, and then that can ruin your voice as well. And it's it's a very I mean kind of almost like it's not like brain surgery, but your vocal cords are so um, they're so fragile that it could you know ruin. Your voice. Like I'm a huge I'm a huge follower and fan of John Mayer, and he had to have that surgery a couple of years ago. I remember him posting a video crying that he was afraid he was never going to be able to sing again. Yeah, it's. It, I mean, it's it's serious. So like when you hear people like like being like, oh, I'm in my voice, like I have to take care of it. It's like you really do, especially if it's your livelihood. Like you're an opera singer, or you're a country singer, or whatever. Like it really is your livelihood. So them being like really careful about it is understandable. It seems like a very deep thing, yeah. or like you know, okay, but well, like, I've even seen like some of the cover bands that I've been in. And I've worked with other musicians. I've actually seen them drink tea, hot tea and honey. Mm -hmm. Like before, yes. they yeah. help coat the throat and stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, because it coats honey, coats your throat. Yeah. And yeah. So, where, did, so. where the hell did this go? We went from shaving to talking about no. I know. I was <laughs> like, we kind of shifted the focus to uh, to <laughs> but, from. Oh, it's interesting. I, I can keep about talking about opera backgrounds that oh, that kind of yeah. led into it, but well, yeah. I teach voice too, so don't get right. me started. I'll just yeah, she'll she'll go all day. <laughs> I guess we need to do another video on that. Then right. So, do you have do you have any other YouTube videos you're working on? Well, I'm going to be doing a couple this week. One I'm going to be doing is going to be on the um, is going to be on my NeoGam slant. So I'm looking forward to doing a video on this. Um, I ran across the idea of the NeoGam from actually Douglas. Uh, he had posted a couple of things about it. of course he's got a couple of advertisements like shirts with the neo game design on it stuff which is really yeah. cool um but he also talked about it in an episode of i'd rather be shaving and i was like "Ooh, it's a really interesting razor i'd love to find one you can't find them anywhere i actually had to get this from it it came in from italy um, okay. but it's a really cool design and i had a really good shave with it the other day but i know a lot of people have questions because it's a true slant i mean that's there's no question about but that sucker's yes, slanted. Yes, JR, I, I turned my head to the slant because that, that is ridiculously slanted. I was just like, what? <laughs> well, the funny thing is, is when you're like shaving down. Yeah, you tilted your head. <laughs> yeah. um, it's, it's, it's kind of funny because the way that I shave my beard and stuff, I was shaving with this the other day, and the way that it naturally comes down, it comes down on a perfect line right oh, here I see <laughs> for my face. So it's kind of weird how that works. But um, it's a cool blade, and I think a lot more people will be interested. They can get more videos out there on stuff like this, which there's not a lot of content. Yeah, for um, sure. But the other video I'm going to be doing at some point, either this week or this weekend, is going to be on 2018, kind of the things that I was really impressed with, my favorite soaps, aftershaves, my okay, sets, okay. brushes. I'm also going to be doing uh, – talking about things that I didn't really care for. I think it's good to be honest and open oh, about absolutely. things that you thought were going to live up to the hype and they just kind of fell flat for you. Uh, like the toggle. I owned a toggle for a little bit and like I said, a little bit and it just, nah. that was so the design on, elements. Yeah. It's kind of a cool looking razor, but it just, it's, it's not a good razor as far sure. as how it's shaped. So, you know. Scar Locker said, do you have, or are you getting the PAA flat bottom? I don't have a flat bottom. Um, I have the, where's the name? I have the double open comb, but I don't feel like I'm going to go get the flat bottom. I just, I'm happy with this and I've got enough already. And I don't think there's any reason to get the flat bottom in my opinion. I like the aesthetics and I love the anodized look of the flat oh, I love bottom. The too. And um, I'm glad that he had released more. It's, it, it's definitely one that's kind of tempting because I love the design and the look of it, but I've, I've got the, aluminum ascension i've got the stainless steel ascension so and the whole point of the flat bottom was to add just a little bit more weight to the head on the aluminum version oh and is that i'll get that if i combine the heads from the stainless steel and the aluminum flat bottom or the there aluminum curb bottom so it's kind of like defeats the purpose true so. but not everybody bought both of them like you weirdo <laughs> yeah right yeah i know so you know variety but yeah well, everybody's trolling in the comments. I think we're done here. I'm going to go play some Red Dead, I think. I think your girlfriend's probably going to go back and steal your PS4. But let's do this again real soon. I look forward to your new YouTube videos, guys. If you aren't following Tim, make sure you are. I'll make sure to post the video on Instagram and everything else. And uh, see you guys later. Sounds good. See y'all. Peace out. <laughs>